Look at that, I've burnt a hole through the shed. Oops, I opened it upside down. <laughs> Hey, it's Andrew and welcome to Habes' Hobbies. In this video, I'm gonna take you on a little bit of a journey. I'm going on an adventure! This is my first week with a laser engraver, the Longa 10 Watt Ray 5. Spoiler alert, it was fun, but there are a few challenges that I had to, you know, try and overcome. What happened to this? Disclaimer, I was sent the Longa Ray 5 for free to test out and put in some videos, so be aware of that. Now I want to address some questions you might be thinking like, why would I need a laser engraver? Like what could I do with it? There are a lot of applications you could use for a machine like this. And I'm not going to just try shill out and be like, you need one, but there is an affiliate link in the description below. I'm not going to shill says the shilliest thing ever. Like the various printers and other pieces of equipment I have, the engraver is a tool. And so you're limited by your creativity and imagination in terms of what you can and can't do with it. However, for me as a miniature hobbyist and war gamer, my needs and the direction I'm going to go with playing with this machine will go towards that. Some of the ideas that came to mind as I was preparing this week was movement trays or converting bases like just base converters tokens now it might sound weird but wargaming tokens like I play a lot of OPR and so having tokens that I can make for like whether a unit has activated if it's stunned or pinned or has any other bonuses to it that's an easy thing that you can make with this engraver and the big one that I'm kind of going into is MDF terrain you can print and then kind of assemble because like MDF kits not that they're that expensive but when you can do it from the comfort of your own home it is a lot cheaper you might notice that I didn't really talk much about applications that involve engraving. I'm going to be using it mainly for its cutting ability. And you might say, well, how can it cut if it's just an engraver? Well, it can. <laughs> and that's that's basically it. However, you'll see later on in some of the terrain and other pieces, engraving can be really helpful to add detail to the flat MDF. Now, setting it up, the unboxing was, I don't know, pretty standard in opening a box. You know, the tape can't hold me back. And I set it up like following the instructions about 60% of the way, but there were some parts where the outer frame needed to be assembled in a specific orientation. And I, I was off by 90 degrees, so I didn't have the beams the right way. And so I had to undo it, which was obviously my bad classic man, not following a set of instructions. And then it all like came together pretty well. Uh, that's one fine looking barbecue pit. Why doesn't mine look like that? Now quickly, let's have a look at the specs. Okay, I am wearing my cool shades as our little machine engraves on the ground. It's got a 10 watt laser, so that's how powerful the laser is. Obviously more power, easy to engrave, easier to cut. And we'll talk a bit more about the power calibration later on in the video. It's quite fast. It can go up to 10,000 millimeters per minute. So I don't know why you'd want to be able to go 10 meters per minute. Like that's wild. It is very precise. Like, I'm amazed by just the precision when I'm watching it. And you'll see later in the time lapses, it's work area is 400 mil by 400 mil. That's a pretty big space compared to all the printers and stuff I own, like nothing competes with that. In terms of safety and stuff, it's got a bunch of safety features, flame detection, collision detection, and some movement. So if you move the engraver while it's operating, all those things like trigger it to like stop and it ceases operation. Just a side note though, if anything like that happens, the beeping is really annoying. And for me, I was in the room, like, or in the garage with it or near it, so I could hear it. Whereas maybe, I think it's probably designed like that, so if you're not in the same room, you know something's wrong. In terms of where to get files and stuff, this was something that I didn't really know much about because I've usually just been getting STLs, the FDM and resin printing, so it was a bit tricky to find stuff at the start, but then Thingiverse apparently has stuff. I found this great creator called Bilbo Stomper and they did a lot of cool terrain and stuff which I'll be printing on later out, but like feel free to check them out, link in the description. You can design your own stuff for basically simple stuff. Like my test print was just 
this thing that just says subscribe if you haven't already. But for me, I enjoy the building, the painting and the wargaming side of the hobby. I don't want to be learning another technology or another like design skill or software. Ain't nobody got time for that. So I've just tried to make this process as easy for me as possible. Now for the slicing or the G code software, I'm using Lightburn. They had a 30 day trial. So I'll have to work out what I'm going to do when that runs out. But your machine should have a reference sheet on terms of what settings to use for different materials materials even if you have that it's still like a good starting point because you know machines vary and materials like vary in lightburn you can generate a materials test and it does like a grid testing two parameters and usually that is speed and power what you want to do is a cut test and an etch test this will do a grid by power and speed and you'll get to see the results of at what speed and at what power like what will the result of a cut or like an engrave be from those results you can pick the optimal settings you want for your desired result just be careful when you're setting up the test particularly for the engraving etch test do not have any of the settings go to 100 percent power because that's how I burnt a hole in my MDF sheet. Look at that, I've burnt a hole through the sheet. One of the fun things when like setting up the software is it's almost like Tetris, like you're doing with like a resin build plate or something, trying to fit as many pieces in and rotating and getting them all to fit. It's a lot more important to do that with, because like whatever material you're cutting out from, like you can't just combine it later and make like fill in all the gaps to make a new sheet of MDF. Like it's not like resin where any leftover resin, you can just use it for the next print. You're like limited by the area. You can either save the G-code to an SD card and then put it into the printer or just connect your printer directly to your computer via USB. Operating the printer, you want some good ventilation. I was doing this in my garage with the doors open and a fan running, but like I could just smell the burning smell. I get that's because I was doing a lot of cutting and maybe if you're doing engraving, that smell wouldn't have been as intense, but it is quite potent. So make sure there is good ventilation. Also make sure you're monitoring the machine and watching it just because there is that risk, depending on what material you're using of fire. Like I feel like it's quite a low risk, but if you're, if you like, you know, you try different settings like I did, 100% power trying to engrave. Gonna have a bad time. Like there is the potential that, I don't know, material could catch on fire. Oh, one of the big things is, is homing. I found it quite tricky to like comb it and just kind of get it where I wanted. Like I wish I could just move the nozzle to where I wanted it and then just click go and it just starts from there. But I get, it's an easy thing to do. I just haven't mastered it yet. And the machine has the ability to like set where home is when you set it up in the slicing software or whatever you want to call it. One of the things that I started with, I had it on right on the concrete floor and then I put some plywood under that just because it was, as it was cutting, it would go through and it didn't like mark the concrete floor, which isn't a big issue to me because it's the garage floor. Also is worth having something under the printer. So now I've just got like plywood underneath it. Make sure you're wearing your glasses as well. You don't want to damage your eyes from the laser, like looking into it, but just make sure you're watching it. Yeah, I look, I haven't read all the safety stuff, but yeah, just make sure you read the manual. That's probably a good one. Do as I say, not what I do. Post-processing, there really isn't much to do. Like with FDM or resin, you're not pulling off supports, you're not washing it, you're not like smoothing it out. You might need to, if your settings didn't do clean cuts, you might need to like sand it a little or like get a hobby knife and just cut off like the bits around the edges. But for the most part, there's not much to do after. If it's like some sort of terrain or thing that you need to assemble, obviously you need to assemble it. For me, one of the things I noted was it the pieces did just smell like burning. I don't know if that will go away because that would be a little annoying. But yeah, there's there's really not much to do afterwards. What I want to do now is just say a big thank you to my Patreons or really just Patreon. Thanks, Claudia and Mark for being the first one, you know, getting that first blood. If you want to become a Patreon, it's only $2. We're doing a weekly behind the scenes of what's happening. In terms of my experience, with the laser engraver doing some of the projects I was going for. The first time I was trying to print this rotunda kind of thing, Bilbo Stomper. Yeah, you can see it's not fully cut through. So we're just gonna probably use a knife just to scrape them out. And, and it just didn't have enough power to cut through it. So the, cl the cuts weren't clean. So I tried using a hobby knife to fix that up, but it was just too tedious. So I was like, MDF's cheap. I'll just recut it. And that worked out really nice. So yeah, you really want to make sure if you're trying to cut stuff that you get clean cuts and nail down those settings. I really do like how the MDF terrain comes out. Like where the cuts are on the material just being burnt black just kind of adds this nice vibe. 
with the like kind of brown MDF color. And just with the ash and stuff, it's really added some nice variations and texture to the, the floor. You'll also notice that it's engraved like the flat areas of the terrain. So that, that's another option where if you you might think, oh, MDF, it's so boring because I can't get texture where like you can ingrain detail and signage and things like that into it. So that's really handy. Now we're gonna go to Habes' handy hobby hints when it comes to laser engraving. Just keep in mind that it is my first week. You really wanna maximize your material. I've say it, said it before, but if you can strategically play stuff, and then if you have stuff left over, even just like, which I'm gonna do is engrave little tokens and cut them out and just use up all the little bits of the material. So do that. You'll churn through material so quickly. Like if you are cutting MDF or similar materials to make things, this engraver can like cut and engrave, unless it's like everything's being engraved, the, its work area in like an hour or two. So you will fly through material if you're trying to like pump out stuff. Like it is quite quick. Be patient with it. There's there's just a lot to learn. And even for me, just being a week in, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface. So yeah, if you want to check out the Long Array 5, link in the description. If you want to see my first week with a resin printer, feel free to click this video. Otherwise, here's another hobby video. Thank you for watching and happy hobbying.